Horatio is on Twitter. Dave, is a car a bad investment even if you have the lease under a company? Well, if you take $30,000 and you turn it into $10,000, a $30,000 car loses value down to $10,000. You can't hide that inside of a company. You still lost. If you own the company, or if you didn't put it in a company, you own the car, you still turn $30,000 into $10,000. Putting it in a company doesn't make the $30,000 not turn into $10,000. It still turns into $10,000. And a lease is just another way of financing a vehicle. You don't dodge the loss in value with a lease. You pay for it in the lease. Think about it. If you lease a $30,000 car and you drive off the lot with it and you pay payments for three years and you turn the car back in, the car's worth $10,000, Do you think the car company that you lease that from is going to lose that $20,000 from that 30 down to 10? Well, no, they're not going to lose that money. They charged you for that $20,000 inside your lease payment, dummy. So, I mean, your lease payment includes the loss of value. You're renting the car. While you're renting it, it's going down in value. And so the included in your rent is the loss in value, the cost of capital called interest, and their profit. It's all built into the lease. So you're giving them profit, you're giving them interest, and you're covering the loss in value while you rent the car for the three years, and it includes the $20,000 in loss. And, and so the lease does not hide, you should lease depreciating assets. That's the dumbest butt statement I've ever heard in my life. And these, quote, financial people say that. You should lease depreciating assets. No, you shouldn't. It's just financing, depreciating assets is all you're doing. You're covering the loss of value in that because lease companies are fairly good with math. They don't sign up to lose money on the stuff they're leasing to you. They're renting you a copier. They're renting you a car. They're renting you a cell phone, whatever it is. And when you give it back to them, it's worth a lot less than when you took it out of their store and you cover the cost of the loss in value, plus profit, plus interest. Thus comes your payment. So leasing a car is actually, when you back into the math, the typical car lease is somewhere around the effective rate of about 14% interest, not counting profit. And how can you do that? Well, you can use a financial calculator, okay? It's fairly easy. If you, you have the Opening part of the lease on a closed-end car lease is a fairly simple equation. You've got the equa- you've got all the numbers for the, the variables for your math equation. For those of you that know how to run a financial calculator, you got the what the car is, what the the MSRP is of the car at the time you take it off the lot. What's the sticker on the car? What's the car's residual value, meaning what can you buy it for at the end of the lease? The difference in those two is how big a loss they're taking on it. Actually, it's not even the MSRP. It would be more like their invoice minus their holdbacks. What's their real cost on the car? Okay, what's what's the dealer's real cost on the car, the manufacturer's real cost on the car? Somewhere around invoice minus residual value. That's how much it's going to lose in value during the time you've got the lease out. They're not going to let you buy it at the end of the lease other than what they think it's going to be worth at that time. You take that figure, that loss in value, and deduct that from the lease payments and take out a profit margin. I just make up a profit margin number, about 10% or something, that they want to make on the sale of the vehicle. And the rest of that is called cost of capital. Translation, that's interest. And your cost of capital, when you put that into a financial calculator during that period of time, will back out most of the time right around 13 to 14% interest. Consequently, Smart Money Magazine, Consumer Reports, and Dave Ramsey's calculator all say leasing a car is the most expensive way. The most expensive way. The biggest ripoff in all of automotive Methods of all the automotive methods, all the ways you could get at it. So you could pay cash for a car, 
You can finance a car straight up, or you can lease a car. What's the most expensive way to drive a car of those three? The car lease. They make more money on leasing than they do on the sale of the automobile. That's how this works, folks. They make more money on financing than they do on the sale of the automobile. But they would rather lease it to you than anything because they make more money on that. The dealer, when they sell the contract for the lease payments back to their manufacturer, the Lexus dealer selling it back to Lexus Motor Credit, the Toyota dealer back to Toyota Motor Credit, the Ford dealer back to Ford Motor Credit, they make more on the sale of the merchandise I mean, on the sale of the contract for the payments than they do on the sale of the car. So the car lease is nicknamed around here the car fleece because there's an old saying that if you got ripped off, you have been fleeced, like fleecing a sheep, cutting all his hair off, leaving him bald. You took his hair. You got fleeced. You got screwed. That's what a car fleece is. The most expensive, worst way to own a vehicle. Cars go, and you can't hide that inside of a company. A bad deal is a bad deal inside of a company. A bad deal is a bad deal. The math sucks on this stuff. Now, I'm not against you having a nice car. I'm just against your nice car having you. The average car payment in America right now is $506 over 84 months. That's according to the National Auto Dealers Association. So if you take $506 and invest it from age 30 to age 70 in a decent growth stock mutual fund, you'll have $5.6 million. I hope you like the car. That's what those car payments are costing you. Car payments are the mantra of the middle class. You guarantee you will be broke your whole life as long as you stay in car payments because it's the most expensive thing that most people buy that goes down in value. The most expensive thing most people buy is a home. At least it goes up in value. But we go finance these cars, and and you're sitting there with a $35,000 kid hauler with payments coming out your ears at $642 a month so that everybody's safe and has their own DVD player in the back of the headrest. But they have no college fund. Well, that's just stupid. You're driving their college fund. And what a world we live in where a minivan is now a status symbol. God help us. Seriously. Can you believe what some of these minivans cost? Have you looked at a Honda Odyssey? I mean, you can get a really nice Mercedes for what you can get a Honda Odyssey for. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, think, people, think. Think. Pay cash for your vehicles if you want to be wealthy. Buy vehicles that total up to be less than half your annual income if you want to be wealthy. I don't want you to have a junk car. I'm not asking you to drive a $1,000 beater the rest of your life unless you make $3,000 a year. If you make $3,000 a year, we need to work on your career. You need to keep your cars down and not fleece them and not get worn out by these car manufacturers. They are getting filthy rich on your stupidity. You're going to have to stop and think, really. 